Welcome or welcome back to Fury Inquisitive Kids. This video will be on Lesson 4, Properties of Parallel Lines. Our course outline for this chapter consists of seven separate videos and we are more than halfway through this chapter. In this lesson, we will be finishing up on learning parallel lines. Our learning goals for today is to understand and master the axioms and theorems of parallel lines and be able to skillfully use the properties of parallel lines to carry out derivation and proof. How can you determine parallel lines? Well, we learned about the transversal angles axiom, the alternate interior angle theorem, and the same side interior angle theorem. These three all lead to the conclusion the two lines are parallel. In turn, if two lines are parallel, what would the relationship be between the transversal angles of the alternate interior angles and the same side interior angles. Can you separate the subject from the predicate in this proposition? Here we have our diagram, and our proposition is, when two parallel lines get cut by transversal, the transversal angles are congruent. Here the subject is, when two parallel lines get cut by transversal, so we already know that the lines are parallel. The predicate, or the conclusion, is the transversal angles are congruent. Think about the if and then statement we learned earlier on in this chapter. If two parallel lines get cut by transversal, then the transversal angles are congruent. So that's how you would say it in words. How would you say it in math? As shown in the figure, AB is parallel to CD. Angle 1 and angle 2 are the transversal angles created when angles AB and CD get intersected by line EF. Prove angle 1 equals angle 2. How can you prove that angle 1 has to equal angle 2? What if angle 1 wasn't equal to angle 2? Here's our derivation process. We first assume that angle 1 does not equal angle 2. We can draw line GH through point M and let angle EMH equal angle 2, as shown in the figure. According to the transversal angle axiom, GH is parallel to CD. Also, because we already know that AB is parallel to CD, there are two lines, AB and GH, through point M parallel to CD. This contradicts the axiom. Every straight line is only parallel to one other straight line through a point outside of it. This was one of the eight axioms in geometry. This means that the assumption in the first step, angle one does not equal angle two, is false. So therefore, angle one has to equal angle two. Conclusion. So in general, parallel lines have the following properties. Theorem 1. When two lines get cut by a transversal, the resulting transversal angles are congruent. Here, they forgot to write the word parallel. I'll write P for short. When two parallel lines get cut by a transversal. It's because we already know that A is parallel to B. That's given. Therefore, that's how we know that angle 1 equals angle 2. We're kind of using the transversal angle axiom, but in reverse. So now it's not an axiom anymore. It's a theorem. When two lines get cut by a transversal, the resulting alternate interior angles are congruent. That's the alternate interior angle in reverse. Given A is parallel to B, angle 1 and angle 2 are the transversal angles created when lines A and B get intersected by C. This is not transversal, it's alternate interior ang angle. So prove that angle 1 equals angle 2. Because A is parallel to B, that's given. Therefore, angle 2 equals angle 3. That's the transversal angle theorem. Because angle 1 equals angle 3, that's a vertical angle theorem. Angle 1 equals angle 2. That's a substitution property of equality. When two lines get cut by a transversal, the resulting same side interior angles are supplementary. Given A is parallel to B, angle 1 and angle 2 are the same side interior angles created when A and B get intersected by C. Prove angle 1 plus angle 2 equals 180 degrees. Here's our derivation process. Because we already know that A is parallel to B, therefore, angle two is equal to angle three using the transversal angle theorem. Because angle one plus angle three equals 180 degrees, therefore, angle one plus angle two equals 180 degrees. We are using the substitution property of equality again. If two lines are both parallel to a third line, then these two lines are parallel. This is a new theorem. As shown in the figure, lines A, B, and C are cut by D, and A is parallel to B, C is parallel to B, 
prove A is parallel to C. Because A is parallel to B, therefore angle 1 equals angle 2. In the same way, angle 2 equals angle 3. Therefore, angle 1 equals angle 3, using the substitution property of equality. Therefore, A is also parallel to C. Conclusion This is a transversal angles axiom. But now, since we've switched it, it's not an axiom anymore. It's a transversal angles theorem. Property 1. Because A is parallel to B, therefore angle 1 equals angle 2. The same side interior angle theorem. Because A is parallel to B, therefore angle 1 plus angle 2 equals 180 degrees. You can use these theorems later on when you're doing harder problems. Here are the steps to proving a proposition. First, clarify what's a subject, what are you already given, and what are you trying to prove with the predicate. Then, draw corresponding diagrams. Then, you can write out the given information based off of the diagram and proposition. Then, you analyze your thinking and write out a clear mathematical derivation. Now let's dive into some practice. As shown in the figure, in quadrilateral ABCD, AB is parallel to CD and AD is parallel to BC. What is the relationship between angle A and angle C and angle B and angle D? Here's our answer. Angle A equals angle C and angle B equals angle D. How do we know that? Here's our derivation process. Because AB is parallel to CD, that's given, therefore, Angle B plus angle C equals 180 degrees, using the same side interior angles theorem. Also, because AD is parallel to BC, that's given. Therefore, angle C plus angle D equals 180 degrees, same side interior angles theorem. Therefore, angle B equals angle D, because angles with the same supplementary angles are congruent. In the same way, angle A equals angle C. Example 2. As shown in the figure, AB is parallel to CD. Angle B equals angle D. Prove AD is parallel to BC. There are multiple methods. Method 1. Because AB is parallel to DC, therefore angle B plus angle C must equal 180 degrees. That's the same side interior angles theorem. Because angle B equals angle D, that's given. Therefore, angle D plus angle C equals 180 degrees. We use the substitution property of equality. Therefore, AD is parallel to BC, using the same side interior angles theorem. You can see that when we're trying to prove something in geometry, like parallel lines, we do need to write out quite a few equations and use, and use a little bit of algebra to help us out. Example 2. As shown in the figure, AB is parallel to CD and angle B equals angle D. Prove AD is parallel to BC. This is method 2. As shown in the figure, you can extend BA to create a transversal angle. Because AB is parallel to CD, therefore, angle 1 equals angle D. That's the alternate interior angles theorem. Because angle B equals angle D, that's given. Therefore, angle 1 equals angle B. That's a substitution property of equality. Therefore, AD is parallel to BC, using the transversal angles axiom. Method 3. As shown in the figure, connect BD to create an alternate interior angle. Because AB is parallel to CD, therefore angle 1 equals angle 4, alternate interior angles theorem. Because angle B equals angle D, that's given. Therefore, angle B minus angle 1 equals angle D minus angle 4, which means angle 2 equals angle 3, which means AD is parallel to BC, using the alternate interior angles theorem.